Well, by the time the Olympics are back on Australian soil, engineers are hopeful a flying taxi will be available to ferry spectators between all the sporting action. Similar concepts, concepts are already in development, but Australian researchers are looking to develop an aircraft with vertical takeoff and that could ultimately be self-piloted. Joining me now is University of the Sunshine Coast Special Projects lead, Tim Kelly. Tim, good to see you. We've just, shown, we've just seen a, a bit of a concept on screen there. Um, how close are we to having this, this vehicle a, a prototype? Are we talking about just one vehicle by the time we get to the Olympics? Give us an update. Yeah, great question, mate. So um, we, we launched the student team um, this morning, pun intended. Um, we've got about 50 students um, signed up for it and about 20 mentors, which is fantastic. It really is in preliminary concept. So the render that you've got there is um, is as far as we've got uh, at the moment. And the, the point there is really to help take the students through the process of, of developing the platform as opposed to, to doing it for them. But as you quite rightly say, there's a whole bunch of fantastic um, vehicles in development already. So I think independent of where we get up to, I think um, um, we're very, very hopeful that we'll have that form of transport ready by the 2032 Olympics and we can hope that we can play our part in accelerating it. So how many people are you expecting it can transport at once? What's its range? How many trips does can it do before you need to, I guess, charge it up again? Yeah, great question. So, look, at, at the full scale, we're, we're hoping it has a, a payload of around about 200 kilos. Um, so that's, you know, one person and a lot of luggage or two people, depending on, on what configuration. Um, ideally, it goes about 250 kilometres an hour, has a range of about 150 kilometres um, on a single charge. Um, from from our perspective, from the sunny coast, getting getting to and from Brisbane is, is really the point of reference that we make. So we're hopeful that we can do that in less than half an hour. Um, and, you know, in terms of recharge time, most fast charging these days can get 80% of a charge in about 20 minutes, but you can also do hot swappable batteries where you drop the main battery system out um, and, and plug in a new one for rapid turnaround. So there's a whole bunch of things we can do there. This is getting ahead of myself, sorry. Once it's up and running, how much will it cost to order one of these things? Um, because no doubt this will be a commercial arrangement. Is, is it going to be expensive to use? Certainly not the intent. So most most air taxis of, of that size that are currently available are somewhere between you know a quarter to half a million dollars. Again, it, it, you know it, it varies a fair bit depending on on what it is. But I think the idea would be that um, much like you have helicopter leasing companies, you might have an organisation that has a fleet of EV tolls, and they charge per ride. So you know you would you would you'd have an app. Um, like like Uber or something similar, and you might say, all right, well, I need to go from Sunny Coast from Richidor CBD to Brisbane CBD. I want to do it at quarter past 11. You rock up at 10 past 11. You jump in, you go. It costs you, say, $50 for that trip, uh, whatever it is, and, and it works something along those lines. The, um, the release says it's going to be remotely piloted first and then it's going to go autonomous. That's the ultimate goal. How safe is remote piloting considering you need to be able to see other aircraft around you and things like that? For sure, yeah. So remote piloting is for all the small scale stuff. We're not going to be putting a human in it and then remote piloting in it. So, you know, we're starting small and simple and we're going to increase in scale and, and sophistication and complexity year on year um, to the point where in a few years' time, you know, probably closer to five or six years or something like that, hopefully we're doing our first um, human pilot tests and then we'll start pushing into uh, into autonomous from there. But it will be a very gradual step-by-step -step process, you know, heavy engagement with CASA and lots and lots of testing. Well, that was my next question. How on board is the Civil Aviation Safety Authority on to autonomous flying vehicles? Are they receptive to the idea of having these types of aircraft flying around in the near future? I don't think that there's... I mean, obviously, it's very much on their radar. Um, it's, it's... I don't... I don't know if it's necessarily something that they've set a, a specific time frame on, but what I'm really hoping for through this program is that we can engage them and, and help help that dialogue. And I think that one of the things that really helps with that is that we're uh, you know it's, it, we're we're a not for profit integrated with the university as part of a student team. It's a long term project. It's not strictly about commercial outcomes, and it's not strictly about this particular vehicle. If we see other organisations like WISC or Uber or Archer or whoever it is actually start to be able to, you know, fly um, autonomous air taxis around the place, and that's a win from our perspective. So we're hoping that we can just be part of that dialogue and help, you know, push 
push the, the regulation side of things and the social acceptance side of things forward. Well, Tim, it's really interesting stuff and it's a cool looking design. I like it. There's one last look at it. Tim Kelly, thanks again. Thanks very much.